that Donald has been indicted once again, this time for mishandling highly sensitive documents after leaving the Oval Office. The classified files were found during last year's FBI raid on Trump's opulent Mar-a-Lago estate. The documents, including those on American nuclear capabilities, were stored in the Mar-a-Lago ballroom, bathroom, and even shower. If convicted, the former president faces a substantial prison sentence. Trump denies any wrongdoing and says he declassified the documents before they were discovered, although no evidence of that exists. Ahead of his first federal court appearance on Tuesday, the former president blasted the indictment as a, quote, baseless and ridiculous witch hunt, and his supporters agree. Teflon Don is still leading the Republican ticket, and under U.S. law, nothing prevents him from running while facing criminal charges. Is there anything that could shake his supporters' trust in the ex-president? How serious is the latest indictment? Could Donald Trump go to prison over secret files? So let's get to it, uh, dear panelists. Could Donald Trump uh, go to prison over uh, the uh, secret uh, files uh, affair? Corinne Clark, uh, as always, we begin with our quick five round, 30 seconds each. We'll let your initial stance on the matter, and we pick it up from there. So please take the lead. Your 30 seconds are on. Yeah, I think it's highly unlikely we'll actually see charges come from this. Um, in every previous case about classified documents, the courts tend to favor the executive here, and we'll probably see that again. The Presidential Records Act does protect him for having presidential records at any time, post-presidency or during his presidency, and we already figured that out with Bill Clinton. Um, and I think that this will actually benefit Trump in the polls. We're already seeing his numbers rise. Yeah, yeah, that appears to be the case. Mr. Fillity, your thoughts? Well, this is a very well laid out and cleverly written indictment that really put the pressure on Donald Trump to show why he did not commit these crimes that he's accused of. This is more than just a political problem now. He has to actually address the legal issues. And it, while it's one thing to say that he's been targeted unfairly, that only goes so far. And now he will be in court. He will have to put on a defense and he will have to prove what he's been saying, that he was entitled to have those documents and, and that he did not violate the law. And, but perhaps those who have to prove first are prosecutors have to prove that he's guilty and not the other way around. But we will dive back uh, further into this in a split second. Uh, Mark Schulman. Your thoughts? I think this is pretty clear cut. I mean, the reality is this was so avoidable. He received mm. a subpoena to return the documents. If he would have returned the documents, none of this would have happened. But he refused to return the documents. He hid the documents. And these aren't just some sort of, you know, something that's a minor secret. These are the major secrets of the United States. They were available in the most obvious way to be taken by spies who were bar around Margo Lago. It in endangered the United States, it endangered American allies. I think this will finally stick a little bit. Some of his biggest supporters won't believe nothing, and the Presidential, Pre Presidential Records Act did the opposite. They say it has to be in the National Archives. Okay. He can go look at it. He can't have it in his home. Okay. Oh, okay. So, so, so to that point exactly, let's feel free to interact from this point onwards, uh, please, Mr. Fillory. Uh, what could be the motivation uh, of keeping those documents, and, and and does it matter really? At the end of the day, it does not matter. The mere fact that he had them is what the government has to prove, and it seems that they're well on their way to establishing that. Whether he believed that he was entitled to them or not, that's not an element when it comes to the Espionage Act what, that he's charged under. What motives he might have had? Well, he, he could very well be arrogant and think that the law doesn't apply to him, or he might justifiably have thought that he was entitled for whatever reason to have them, but mere possession is enough. What was going through his head doesn't really matter. Corinne. Absolutely not the case, especially when we've seen classified documents cases handled very differently where intent actually does matter. There's zero evidence that Trump intended to sell these secrets, to use them to harm our national security at all. And there also is actually a lot of legal precedent that says he has the right to these cases. Is that to there these is files. no legal precedent that says he can have it once he had received a subpoena to return them. He received he a subpoena to return them. He then hid them. That is a clear violation of the law. There's no if, ands, or buts. It's not gray. It's not questionable. He had to return them. Why he kept them, no one will ever know. But 
Unless you believe that the National Archives somehow supersedes the power of the presidency, which has he is zero not a president legal anymore. Excuse me, he was not, not the president. He is a former president. He's former presidents president have the right to the look at documents. Software. They do not have the right to make their own decisions. It is so funny. Well, we we'll talk about legal precedent and then we completely ignore it uh, because. President Clinton was caught after the time of his presidency with highly classified documents, eight years worth of audio files in his software. Those were personal I documents that were not, it was decided yes, it was exactly. not highly, like, none so of it was classified it, at all. It's it actually, fake news. It, it was not matter. classified. Not. That's it, what that proved. It doesn't matter if it's classified or not. It doesn't matter if they're president or not. The president has the ultimate authority to keep the documents from his own presidency. The National no, Archives does not. No, he does, does not. He absolutely does not. That's the whole point of the Presidential <laughs> Records Act. It, you're ignoring it. The issue with Clinton no, was something that was decided. It was a personal. It was a personal recording. Previous ever. I am There's never been a case like this ever. Okay, but because we, they've never brought charges for it, not because. The precedent never allowed charges to be brought. That is what they're ignoring is all the legal precedent because that Records Act actually did protect former presidents and it will end up protecting Donald Trump. Uh, so, Mr. Felody, there are other um, similar but perhaps different cases uh, on the issue of classified documents, uh, Pence, Biden. If Trump goes down, do they go down with him? Well, with Pence, the issue was that he had some documents. He willingly said that he didn't, should not have had them. He returned them as soon as he was made aware that he had them and mm. as soon as he discovered them. That's not what Donald Trump did. Donald Trump maintained them. He thought that he was entitled to them, and he's accused of obstructing justice by not returning to them. The issue ultimately, though, is that Trump can only go so far in saying, look, you didn't prosecute other people. You cannot prosecute me. That's not a legal defense. That's an argument for a prosecutor not to indict him, which has already happened, but that goes to jury nullification. When he goes on trial, a jury could say, look, we think that you did it, but because the government selectively targeted, you, we're not gonna find you guilty. That, that's where this is going. It's not, it's not a valid defense to say you did not target other people. Uh, and, and perhaps uh, adding uh, to that, uh, the other, to an extent, lesser cases, uh, are they scaling down the impact of the overall um, uh, Trump legal uh, uh, sagas? Is it all becoming one blurry mush, so to speak, Mark Schulman? Well, to some extent, look, Trump does that. That's what he's trying to do. And of course, he has, he's been indicted in New York on lesser charges. He will most likely be indicted in Washington on January 6th issues. And he may also be indicted in Atlanta. So yes, it looks like he's being indicted in many, many places. It might be because he does a lot of wrong things. I mean, we have to go back to the fact that he said when he was running the first time that he could shoot someone on Fifth Avenue and get away with it. And that's his attitude. And part of the Republican Party seems to believe that. We don't care what he did. We don't care what he's done. Done. We don't care if he's an accused rapist. We care about nothing but the fact that we love Donald Trump and anything he does is okay. So before, That's where the part of the Republican Party is at the moment. So, so before we get to Corinne uh, Clark's take, let's take a listen to the man of the hour, uh, Donald Trump, saying, yes, well, um, you're giving me lemons. I'm turning them into sweet, sweet lemonade. Take a listen. The ridiculous and baseless indictment of me by the Biden administration's weaponized Department of Injustice will go down as among the most horrific abuses of power in the history of our country. Many people have said that, Democrats have even said it. This vicious persecution is a travesty of justice. You're watching Joe Biden. Joe, by think of it, Biden is trying to jail his leading political opponent, an opponent that's beating him by a lot in the polls, just like they do in Stalinist Russia or communist China, no different. As far as the joke of an indictment, it's a horrible thing. It's a horrible thing for this country. I mean, the only good thing about it is it's driven my poll numbers way up. Can you believe this? Way up. So, Corinne, is Trump merely gaining momentum over the indictment? I think he will gain momentum over this, and that is because it's not just a bunch of Trump supporters saying this is a politically motivated case. It's actually a majority of Americans. The latest polls show that 70 percent or more actually agree that this case is politically motivated. There's half of this country that thinks that it's fine to pursue a politically motivated case against Biden's top opponent. But you can't deny that they are pursuing this when they completely 
neglects to pursue similar or greater crimes committed by other political figures or family members. There has never been anyone who's done something quite like this, and the tragedy of this is it could have been avoided. All he had to do was return the documents. You know, January 6th, all these other things, is questionable, you can question First Amendment and everything else. Here, all he had to do was return the documents, and it would have been over. No one would have prosecuted him, the story would have been a one-day story, and that would have been the end of it. His insistence on holding on to super-secret documents makes no sense. But he does it anyway, because many of the things that he does make no sense. Hillary Clinton maintained a private server where she held millions of classified documents. There illegally. were no millions guess, of classified documents. There were a small number of documents that after the fact became classified. Those were the days before we understood the, the, the dangers of the Internet. Please, the report of the Trump administration's uh, Department of State said that no security breaches took place and that she had done nothing that was, it was wrong to have this server. But there was no security breach or anything else relating to her server. So please, stop with the what app is um, Clinton, Biden. There has been nobody who's done anything straight like, like Trump. It's unbelievable. He didn't have to do it. He just had to return them. You're absolutely right. Trump has been incredibly arrogant, and that has gotten him in trouble. But I will differentiate what you said and say that, you know what, maybe the Justice Department should have charged Hillary Clinton. Maybe they should mm. charge Joe Biden. Maybe they should charge other people who are accused of breaking the law. But ultimately, that doesn't matter. What we have before us is an indictment of, of Donald Trump, and he has to defend those charges. And at this point, merely saying you didn't target other people, that's not an excuse. That's not a defense. He needs to address the charges. So all of this, it will he gain political ground? Absolutely. More people will go out and vote for him, but that does not help him get out of trouble legally. It does actually, because you mentioned it yourself, jury nullification is actually a real thing, and it does matter. So you can't say that it doesn't matter at all if people think this is an unfair targeting of a of a presidential candidate, it absolutely does. This has to be, he has to be convicted by a jury. And if a jury feels that our Department of Justice has been compromised, that they are pursuing political cases and they do not want to hold Trump accountable for these these politicized charges, then they won't. And Trump will not be charged, and he will not be stopped from being He's the been next charged. Let's start, get, get your terms correct. He has been charged. He's going to go to trial. He may not be convicted. I agree. There could be jury notification. But he has been charged, and he's been charged with a serious crime. And the evidence is overwhelming. The fact that you don't think he should be, he should be convicted because other people weren't charged is not really relevant. Why did he do it? it is if he did jury, it, why shouldn't he jury. pay the price for, for violating the law? He clearly violated why, the law. Why does he? Why should he get matter. away with that? A jury's opinion no longer matters in a criminal mm. case. Is that what you disagree with me? A jury's opinion shouldn't matter. He should be convicted. No, I didn't regardless. it shouldn't matter. A jury notification is a thing. It's not a good thing, but it's a yeah, it's I a think. thing. But that's not the point. The point of the matter is, I'm asking you. He clearly violated the law. There's overwhelming evidence that he violated the law. Why is it okay that he did that? Why didn't he just return the documents? Please explain Jerry, that. Why would you support somebody who does things okay. like that and was wants to be president Jerry, of the United uh, States okay. again? Uh, dearest panelists, hold your thoughts right there. We're taking a very short break, but so much more to unpack, obviously. A few minutes, and we're back with the summit. Do not go anywhere. Welcome back to the summit. Still with us, Corinne Clark, Jared Fillity, Mark Schulman. Thank you all very much for staying with us. We're also staying on topic, of course. But before we get back to our conversation, as even uh, Trump's uh, critics uh, uh, are not convinced, at least, that uh, the uh, indictment uh, will bury him, how should his Republican competitors tackle it uh, 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 to, from the get-go? Let's take a quick listen and pick it up from there. And as Americans, it's essential to remember that you are innocent until proven guilty. While much of the speculation rages on the airwaves of America, the former president, like every American, is entitled to the presumption of innocence. We are not going to let these agencies run our country. And... And what happens is, when there's no constitutional accountability, our founding fathers would have absolutely predicted the weaponization that we've seen with these agencies, particularly justice and FBI. Because when you don't have constitutional accountability, human nature is such that they will abuse their power. So let's get to it. Another quick fire round, 30 seconds each. Uh, would, should GOP candidates uh, uh, use the Trump... K 
case against him or for themselves to an extent. Jared Filoni, please take the lead. The lead. <laughs> I, th I think we have seen an increasing number of people in this country worry about the Department of Justice and other government agencies being politicized and used by one party or another for their particular purposes. For the Republican candidates right now, it's beneficial to them to make advantage of Trump's situation and call on reforms in the government and point out that there is unequal application of laws and that some people seem to be targeted. This is a message that resonates with Trump voters and whoever ultimately wins the nomination will benefit from these arguments. Mark Shulman. The Trump um, question is a big one for all of the people running against him. They're all afraid to come out against him because they're afraid of losing their base, but they want his base to vote for them instead of him. So the question is they have a, a very careful line to basically convince voters he's so damaged that you have to vote for me, even though I think he's a good guy and I don't think he did anything bad, but he's so damaged that he can never yeah. win in the general election. That's their hope. I doubt it'll work. But that's, that's what they're trying to do. They really are afraid to come out straight out except for Chris Christie and one or two others. None of one's willing to tell this truth that someone who leaves national security documents on the floor should never be entrusted with America's secrets again. Corinne Clark. Yeah, I think we'll see a lot of solidarity from the Republican candidates. We've seen some Democrat politicians and uh, commentators also agree that this weaponization of the Department of Justice is concerning for everyone. They're after Trump now, but they will be after whoever threatens mm. the status quo in the future. I think no one can, with any intellectual honesty, can actually believe that a former president having access to classified documents is a problem. That's why it's never been charged before. So I, I think um, that they're going to have to come to around to the truth and be on the but side of Trump. Access. It's not a question of access. It's a question of leaving them around to be taken by any spy who walks into Mar a Lago. It's not it's not access. He had access. He could go to the National Archives and look at anything he wanted to. But he was not allowed to take it to an unsecure location. Documents that should only be seen in a skiff in a secure location are sitting in a bathroom, in a ballroom, in a public zone. I mean, that's so irresponsible. The idea that this man could again become president of the United States, I don't understand how any Republican or normal person could think that's a good idea. Well, to Corinne's I point, that the that fact that they were, what they're accused of having been left isn't really relevant to the charges. The fact that he had them at all is what's at issue. So when the government is coming out and saying, well, he left them in the bathroom, he left them in the ballroom, they don't need to prove that to prosecute him or, in, or convict him. They just need to show that he had them. So they're in a way, they are making an extra effort to make him look bad. Not that he has none at all on his own when he is allegedly recorded on tape, admitting that he knew that he had not declassified documents and that he could not do so at that time. I mean, this should be a question for voters. Yes, a, a question of jury nullification. Go back to the earlier question. And when jury nullification, when it comes around, the question is, does someone who acts that way deserve to be nullified? Does someone who acts that way to get a, a free pass? I mean, the reality is that he endangered the security of the United States. American soldiers, American spies all over the world were so, endangered by how he acted. Yeah. That's the fact. Now, it's not part of the indictment, but the indictment is just relates to the fact that he violated the law and violated the Espionage Act. So speaking but of that's the reality of what actually happens. So, so speaking of voters, uh, uh, let's take a look at some uh, at some numbers. It seems to be, you know, split in half. A plurality of Americans think that Trump should have been indicted uh, by a federal grand jury on charges related to his handling or mishandling of classified documents. But near equal number say the charges are indeed politically motivated. This is according to a fresh ABC uh, news poll. So uh, is the legal going to be a political game changer? Will the indictment change anyone's mind or, or is the U.S. just, you know, trapped in political deadlock, Corinne? I think there will be a major political factor to this because, as I said, most people do agree that this is a politically motivated case and the weaponization of our Department of Justice serves no one in either party. And it does have to be something that we manage at some point. It's going to get everybody. But I, I honestly cannot get past this pearl clutching over, oh my gosh, we can't have an executive do something wrong for a party that repeatedly nominated and elected Bill Clinton, who nominated Hillary Clinton, who uh, elected Joe Biden. I mean, honestly, spare me the drama and the pearl clutching and just admit that you want your political opponent to be politically prosecuted. Like, don't, don't 
with the fake outrage. No, I don't want him to be politi- I, actually, I actually don't want him to be politically prosecuted. I don't want him to go to jail. I want him to retire. I want a 77-year-old man who acts in this way to just retire from politics. <laughs> leave it to the Santos. Leave it to a new generation of people. He should not be running for president after doing what he's done. He, I don't want him to go to jail. Who wants a 77-year-old man to go to jail? I just want him to say, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have done well, it. You know what? I, I can I, think I, of I, one I, I person. I passed this time. Let someone else become president. Oh, well, Jared Fillity, uh, uh, is it yet another proof that the political and the legal are just too profoundly intertwined at this point in time? Is there any way to undo it? Those are two sides of the same coin, Mm. and there's no real way to do them. But then again, you you have to, when it comes to the legal, and maybe that's because I'm a lawyer and been practicing law for a long time, I think that you do have to separate out the legal charges. Those are things that you actually have to put on a, a prosecution and a defense for. And whether or not you believe what one person is saying, that borders, that goes into the political. But ultimately, you have to argue a legal case on its merits. And that's not about who else should have been prosecuted. It's not whether Donald Trump, you know, what what level of knowledge he had when he should not have had documents at all. It, it's about proving the elements of the case and defending it. The politics will not change. Right now we are we are in a in a state of disarray in America where people are extremely on one side or another. There's no middle ground anymore. You either think Trump should go to jail or he should be exonerated completely. There, there's there seems to be a lack of middle ground. And quite frankly, we're not gonna have that any time soon, not while the current crop of candidates is still running. It may be years until we recover to some semblance of normalcy. Yeah, Mark. Yeah, I mean, look, I agree with that to some extent. Look, uh, the American politics is deeply, deeply divided on a uh, strange way because there aren't the issues that divide Americans the way people think. There aren't major issues that divide the Republicans and Democrats when it comes to the actual issues. It's really a cultural matter. It's an identity factor. It's identity politics more than anything else. And that's a shame because, you know, you're at some point it's almost talking like there's going to be a civil war, but over what issues? Yeah. There are no deep divides in America other than these personal issues or these, these cultural issues, which shouldn't really be there. So, Corinne, uh, before we uh, conclude, is it going to be topic-related at all, or just yay or nay for Trump, these elections? Uh, I think it'll be a good combo of both, as it always is. I think the legal matter here is so political, because the law on the classification process is actually not a lot of law. It's mostly executive order and agency codes, and none of those actually regulate the executive. They are from the executive to regulate agencies, agents, and cabinet members, and the military. As as we know, executive orders do not usually regulate the executive. That would not be in their best interest. So there is a lot of legal room to play here and a lot of gray area, and that makes this case so much more political than any other case. Well, raise yourselves. It's only just a very beginning. Jared Fillity, Mark Schulman, Corinne Clark, thank you so very much for joining us tonight. We appreciate your time, your insight. See you around.